Don't you just hate it when you get into your Nissan 350Z, you turn the key, and this happens? Yeah, that's right, it's failing to start. Well, I've got to admit, my Nissan 350Z has been very good to me for a number of years. It's a 2005, it's got about 130,000 miles on it, and it's had almost no problems at all. Really, really small things like relay issues or door handles broken. That's really all I can speak of. The car has just been really, really good. So, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 2005 Nissan 350Z. And now this is something you guys rarely ever see me work on. Typically I'm pulling apart a motorcycle or an old vintage Volkswagen. But we were having an issue last night. I took a ride with Wild Bill and I had a problem with little battery terminals coming loose. The car actually stalled itself out. So when I went under the hood and I tightened the battery terminals back down, the car started one time. After that, when we parked it somewhere, we got back out and I went to turn the key and it wouldn't start. Now some people say, oh, you need new battery. No, I don't need new battery. You turn on the lights, the lights come on properly, power windows are working, radio comes on, all the fans are blowing at speed. It, it doesn't need a new battery. We've already ruled that out. The next thing people tell me is, hey, you need a new starter. You know, what makes you so sure that I need a starter? Maybe there's something wrong in the wiring. Perhaps it's a relay, perhaps it's a fuse. Maybe we should have a look. And I know exactly where to check because I've had the problem on this car exactly five years ago to date. It's, it's kind of funny that it happened exactly this week five years ago. Anyway, let's go ahead and hop under the hood and let's show you what we're looking at. But as always, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, and don't forget to check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links so you can find out all the different things that I do. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back right after the intro. Now right here on the right side of the car, and when I say right side, I mean the logical right side, as if you're sitting in the driver's seat looking forward, the right hand side of the car would be where we're at now. This is your battery, of course, and we're just going to go ahead and pull this battery right out of here. And we're going to disconnect this real quickly. And this is the battery terminal that I've been having issues with. It's a little bit loose on that terminal because this old steel connector here is a little bit stretched out. It doesn't like to seat too tight. Well, of course, now that I'm trying to remove it, it's nice and tight. <laughs> All right, and we're about to get a thunderstorm. When I started recording this video, there was nothing of the sort. Come on, lift off. There it goes. We're going to pull the positive off also. Let's go ahead and get these little pieces out of the way. Oh! battery terminal just busted well that's something I'm gonna have to fix okay and then these little covers pop out with a bunch of these little plastic buttons some of mine are missing because the guy who changed my windshield out lost them but we're gonna get up under here and move this battery okay now that we're under here behind the battery there's a black plastic box that lives over here. That black plastic box is known as your power distribution module. And it's not just any power distribution module, it's actually an IPDM, which is an intelligent one. So it has some type of uh, computer in it for getting power to the various parts of the car. Now inside of this, a Nissan for some reason at the time that I got this car, didn't want you to know that inside of this module, if I, yep, I get the cover off. It's a whole bunch of fuses and relays which are not meant to be user serviceable. The reason is, is because Nissan would rather sell you a computer. This computer runs anywhere as between $600 and $1,000 depending upon how much your dealership likes you. And when I discovered that I was having a problem with my ignition, not the starter, just the ignition, it was actually because of that relay right there on the bottom. 
So for me to uh, have determined that that was the issue, I would have had to have this towed to Nissan dealership. It would have been anywhere between about $50 and $100 for a tow. After I got it over there, they would have ran a diagnostic on it, which is some man walks around the car, pulls the cover off, and determines that that's a bad relay. So that would have been probably, you know, anywhere between $50 to $200, depending upon, once again, how much a dealer likes me. And then the labor to replace the computer and the computer itself, before you know it, the ticket would have added up to some $1,500 for repair, when all I needed was a $4 relay, that thing. So, we're going to dig in here and figure out which relay is the actual issue. I believe it's this one over here on the bottom. I think that's the starter relay. This one is the one for the ignition. That's the one I was having trouble with before. Uh, the last time I turned the key, started the car, but drove about 10 feet and everything just shut off. And it turned out that relay actually somehow got moisture on it. Everything turned green and went bad. So I pulled the relay out of the high beam one, which I think is the one on top, plugged it in there. This is a street fix. You can do this roadside if you break down and the car then started up and drove just fine. So we're gonna experiment by pulling out the relay for the high beams just the same and plug it into the starter relay and see if this car kicks over. Okay, it's starting to rain. For those of you that watch my videos, it's probably not the least bit surprising. But we're gonna pull out the um, starter relay and these can be a little tricky sometimes. You might have to put a pair of pliers on them, but this is the starter relay. Little guy here, these are pretty easy to get. I'll give you a link down in the video description how to get one of these for yourself should you need some, and I recommend that you carry some always. Wow, the wind is just picking up like crazy. Well, I recommend you always keep some of these in the car because if something goes wrong, like I said before, they're real easy to replace. Well, the high beam one is this one here. So let's pull that one out. Plug it down into the starter relay. There's only one way to put them in. If you try to put them in backwards, naturally they won't go in. And I'll put the starter one in the high beam one, and that way I can test that relay just the same. Okay, now we might be done. We might have gotten lucky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cover back on the uh, PDM here. Put this all back together. Especially want it together before it rains. Oh, because my windshield washer tube was in the way. All right, clicked in. Now drop the battery back in let's connect our terminals back up here I'm not gonna tighten them down just yet because I might find myself taking this back apart all right now we're ready to um, turn that key and see just what this thing does <laughs> all right well here we go moment of truth time if only I can get the key in the ignition Oh, still not starting. Ooh, hang on a second. Something going on with the clutch pedal too. Okay, we're gonna investigate that, but um, we definitely had a problem with the relay because at this point, yeah, my high beams are not flicking either. Okay, so when I switched that over to the high beams, that was correct. The headlight relay, we moved over to the starter, and that is now working, but now the high beam relay is not working at all, which tells me that the starter relay was bad. So I need to pick up some relays. In fact, I think I have some inside the house now that I'm thinking deeper about it, because I know I ordered some spares, and I thought I gave the last one to D&D Cycles, but actually I might have one more sitting in my desk, which is a foolish place to put it. It should be here in the car. Anyway, uh, we're gonna evaluate the uh, clutch switch and figure out what's going on down there. Well, anyway, I took a long pause, and yes, I found an extra relay, boom, right there, for that block in my desk drawer. So I got that fixed. High beams are now working. Starter solenoid is now working. But the next thing that came up, <laughs> and I noticed this on the floor by accident the other day when the problem started to occur, there was this little rubber gogi sitting on the floor, broken. And I thought it was something that was caught on my shoe, and I just kind of tracked it into the car. Turns out that this little guy actually is attached to the clutch pedal and there's a little switch on the clutch pedal that stops you from starting the car unless the button is depressed so without this there it's not pushing on the button properly so anyway there's the new piece and there's the old one it's got to go in up under the dashboard here you can see the blue tape that i put on there which is currently holding in a penny <laughs> there's a hole right there let 
wonder if I'm gonna be able to get it in. Yep, I got it in. Thought I was gonna need a tool. And then when the clutch pedal gets pressed, it hits the button that's right there. And that's how that works. So it turned out I had a compounded problem. And it wasn't just these two things. Yes, the relay was bad. Yes, the rubber was shot. But we still had a few more problems. <laughs> the battery terminal post to positive is broken. It was not making good connection on the battery. And this has actually been an ongoing problem on again, off again for the last few years. When I went to loosen the nut on it to remove it to do some electrical work, it just broke. And at that point I knew, okay, it's time to just replace that. And these are only like $7. It wasn't too bad. Local dealership for that thing replaced it easily. Relay, I actually ordered uh, five of them for $9 on the internet. Links will be down in the video description, by the way, for these things if you do need them. And I replaced him right here. So he's good to go. Now, when I had this all apart, I was getting really, really pissed off because there was one more problem. Even though I went in, and by the way, I where this belongs on the clutch pedal, I, I taped a penny over it. <laughs> as uh, redneck engineered as that might be, it got the car started, and I determined that that's what it was. But it was still intermittent. After everything was said and done, all of a sudden it still didn't want to start. And then sometimes it would. Now this, of course, has been a few days since I started to record the video, so you guys aren't seeing everything. I got really pissed off, and I did a few things late at night and a few things during the day. I just here and there, hit or miss, whenever I had the opportunity. And the other thing that I determined, and I, <laughs> this is <laughs> something that really scared the crap out of me, but this uh, IPMD, Intelligent Power Distribution Module, IPDM, my bad. The fuse block is essentially what it is. But it's a little more sophisticated than that. It has a bunch of internal relays on it. And uh, there's some smart circuitry on there that stops the battery from dying in the event you leave your door open a little bit and your dome light is on. That kind of stuff. Well, um, MSRP on those is about $1,600. And I mentioned that earlier in this video. The dealership wants a little over $1,000 for it. I think they wanted $1,100 the last I asked them. So uh, I didn't want to have to replace that. But I determined that when it wasn't working... And I, I reverse engineered following which pins go to which using a service manual. I discovered that there was a electrical, sh uh, not a short, but a break on uh, fuse number 89. Fuse number 89 happens to be the one for the starter circuit. It got power on the side coming in, but power on the side going out to pin 25, which happens to go to the clutch switch over on the driver's side here. It's a... Uh, really not that sophisticated it's just a trace on a board that goes right from the left hand side of the fuse right to pin 25 and well pin 25 had no juice coming out of it if it has no current then clearly there's a break somewhere between positive side of the fuse and pin 25 so the first thing I changed was the fuse it wasn't as simple as that so the next thing I changed out <laughs> was uh, another fuse just in case the terminals on it were a little dirty or you know corroded I'd slipped it in and out a few times to make sure I cleaned it up still wouldn't work so anyway putting a continuity chester across it you see it right here in this little time-lapse video but i had to take the i the ipdm apart and i've been told even by nissan that these are not serviceable units you can't fix them don't bother <laughs> you guys seem to forget who i am don't tell the mfdm no never tell me no i took it apart on the workbench I took a few pictures of it along the way. No video, though, because I was incredibly pissed off. I just wanted the thing fixed. And sure enough, I found a bad solder trace to pin 25. Simple as that. All I did was just heat it with a soldering gun gently. Once it fused back up, put the thing back together, and I put it in the car. And I believe right now, everything should be working. Because now everything at this point has been replaced. So let's go ahead and turn that key one more time. And let's see what happens. Does the MFDM win the battle? That would be a yes, except my radar detector just fell down. <laughs> That's the least of my worries. Put that right back up there. Anyway, yep, the Z runs again. Fantastic. Anyways, you guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, hey, consider supporting the channel. Check me out on patreon.com forward slash duckshit. You can also hit up duckshit.net and find a link directly to Patreon. 
have also got some product, by the way. Yes, that's right. Duckman's got merch. Check out the bottom of this video, just below the video description. You'll see some of the shirt designs that I've got. And if there's something else that you'd like, because I'm in control of making the designs for these things, let me know. I'll make a few so that way you guys can buy it. Thanks so much. See you next time. All right, one more time. Here we go. <laughs> that is the sound of music.